Guys, as you can see, I've got my handhelds sat right here because I have no idea what else to put here, and they look very nice. Welcome to the Mario Matter, your favorite Nintendo podcast episode number 75 here. Guys, thank you for listening on Apple, Spotify, YouTube. I am your host, M. Swizzle, or Max. Call me whichever one you would like. Max, M. Swizzle, first name, YouTube name, whatever, guys. We have a packed show today, as literally always, okay? We have Nintendo Switch 2 rumors. I know, I know, not everyone likes rumors, but trust me, guys, this looks correct. And if they're not correct, we have people to expose. Either way, it's a big news piece. We have the rumored date for the upcoming February 2024 Nintendo Direct, and it's not, it's, it's not even going to be a Direct. It's going to be a something else Direct. Guys, Things are in shambles in the in the Nintendo universe. Shambles, I tell you, shambles. We also, in addition to that, have an interview summary with the Nintendo president, Shantaro Furukawa. He talks about the future, the Nintendo Switch. He responds to Pal World, the potential Pokemon killer. Guys, if there's a bigger news day than today on this very podcast, your favorite Nintendo podcast, if it's not already, it is now. Show me it. Show me a bigger news day than today. Now, here's the thing. I don't want to waste your time. Let's go ahead. Let's start diving into all the Nintendo news you would like to hear about. And then after all of that, I answer the questions you have asked me through voicemails and through written questions. With that said, let's not delay. What you want to hear, let's go. Welcome to the Mario Matter. The number one Nintendo podcast! My friends, we are here at the Nintendo News Headline segment where I go through tons of Nintendo news that you want to hear about. However, we save our bigger topics for, of course, later in the show. If you don't want to wait for those, feel free to skip around in the podcast. If you look in the description, you'll see timestamps down there with certain times of the podcast with different topics. Say, for example, if you skip to 3642, you will find uh, me talking about whatever. I don't know what the actual timestamp will be, but it's all in the description down below. With that said, let's run through some Nintendo news. I actually didn't grab, if I can stand up real quick. Stand, go grab... I have my, my Nintendo News headlines all in this hat. So I have a hat right here, and it has tons of papers in it. And we grab a paper and then talk about whatever the paper says. So we've got like 10 headlines to run through before all the Nintendo Switch 2 talk. Let's go ahead. Let's see what we're talking about first, guys. Let's grab this one. All right, here we go. Our first piece of news, and it's a big one. It's a big one, and it's a recent one. It's one that a lot of you might want to hear about and might be tuning in to hear about. The headline reads, Nintendo Switch February 2024 updated game sales, which is awesome. So, so if, you, if you didn't know, over the past week, Nintendo has put out their updated numbers of sales for games like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Animal Crossing, New Horizons, Pikmin 4, everything. We now know how many copies of these games sold as of February 2024. We know the updated sales for Mario Wonder, Tears of the Kingdom, all these cool games. Now, when I was writing these notes, I actually had a typo. And I wrote, February 2023. So if you'll observe here, if you're watching the video version, I wrote a 4 over the, over the uh, three in Sharpie. And this paper is so messily cut, it's not even a joke. But yes, I did write a big Sharpie four over that, <laughs> over that three. Perfect. All right, so let's then go to the news. So we have the, once again, the updated sales numbers here, guys. And they're interesting, very interesting. So I have the top 10, the new top 10 best-selling Nintendo Switch games, and then I also have three other uh, updated game sales, which are notable. So, during this, we'll go through the Mario Wonder sales, Tears of the Kingdom, all the kind of stuff. Let's go ahead, let's get into it. So, let's start with the top, the new top 10 best-selling Nintendo Switch games here, from 10 to number 1. 
So at number 10, which I believe is still the same as last time, number 10 is New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, and that game, as of this month, has sold 17.20 million units or copies, copies of the game, you would say, and I'm glad to be one of them. So, kudos. Number nine is Tears of the Kingdom, the newest Legend of Zelda game, with 20.28 million copies sold. That's a lot of copies, and you also have to, you know, consider some of the games on here have been out since, like, 2017. Tears of the Kingdom is not even one year old yet, so you have to give credit to that game for selling 20 million in less than a year. It sold 10 million in the first three days, that's already impressive, but 20 million, can't, can't, can't even hate on it, right? Number eight is Super Mario Party, which honestly, I, I didn't like Super Mario Party that much, I don't know what it is, I didn't like it, but if you put a Mario Party game on Switch, it's probably gonna sell well, and that it did, 20.34 million copies for Super Mario Party at number 8. Number 7 is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet with 24.36 million copies sold. That is just over a year old. It's a year and, what's it, uh, three months old, I think, because they came out in November? That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, also with the DLC for that game, it'll probably boost sales even more. So, you have that going for you. And then, number six, Pokemon Sword and Shield, 26.17 million. Did I say how many copies Scarlet, uh, Scarlet and Violet sold? Scarlet and Violet sold 24.36. Sword and Shield is at number six and sold 26.17 million. Mario Odyssey is at number five with 27.65 million. Breath of the Wild, the previous Zelda game, sold 31.61 million. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, number three, sold 33.67 million copies. My favorite Switch game, Animal Crossing New Horizons, has sold 44.79 million copies. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the best-selling Switch game at number one with 60.5 million copies sold. It has now reached 60 million copies. That's one of Nintendo's best-selling games ever. Now, their best-selling game is, I believe, Wii Sports, because it was packed in with nearly every single Wii that you ever released. So, of course, it'll be the best-selling. If you sell a Wii, you'll sell a copy of Wii Sports. Can we actually fact-check? Hold on. Let's, guys, let's, let's for fun, best-selling Nintendo games of all time. It's Wii Sports, right? And then, what is it after that? It's, uh, if it'll, this is too hard to even nap. Here, here, here. Wii Sports, then Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. With the Wii U and Switch sales combined, it is then Mario Kart 8. Very awesome. Nintendo's best-selling Nintendo game that is not packed in with every single Nintendo console. There you go. That's, that, that's a fun stat. Awesome. And then also, if you guys were curious, we do have the numbers for Mario Wonder, Pikmin 4, Mario RPG. Let's read them. So, Mario Bros. Wonder, while not being in the top 10 best-selling Switch games, because it is pretty dang new, it has sold 11.96 million copies, which is a lot. That that's That's a number to be proud of if you are Nintendo. You have Pikmin 4, selling 3.33 million copies, the best-selling Pikmin game of all time, but honestly, it's not saying a whole lot, because, like, no Pikmin game has sold, like, crazy numbers, so 3.33, uh, that's one too many threes, 333 is an unlucky number, I've been told, and then Super Mario RPG has sold 3.14 million copies, already outselling the original game before the remake was made. Now, honestly, that sold more than I thought it would. That game came out three months ago, last November, mid-November, less than three months ago. Three million copies? I mean, I guess, one, it's a Mario game, two, it's a great game, and three... 
people have nostalgia, as per any remake that ever comes out. So, I understand it makes a whole lot of sense. That is our first headline of the day. Updated Nintendo Switch sales, you gotta love when those come out, guys. Let's shake up the hat and pull out our next headline to discuss today. And then I actually found one more piece of news that I did not have time to print out and put in this hat. So we'll go over it somewhere in the middle of all these headlines. So let's shake it up. Let's grab this headline. Let's see what this what this is. There we go. Oh, I know what it is, guys. We have to do some research because I wanted to, to, to research it with you. Guys, Smash Bros. Ultimate is getting Pokemon Spirits added. Okay, guys. Now, here's the thing. When I find news for this podcast, you know, I, I, I tend to know what everything means, right? But you have to understand. When Smash Bros. Ultimate came out, I... I didn't really care. This will sound crazy to you guys, but I was in middle school when it came out. A lot of you guys think I'm like 28 years old. <laughs> I was in middle school when the game came out. And at that point in my life, I didn't really care to play hours on hours of Smash Bros. So me, this is me saying I don't know that much of what a Pokemon Smash Bros. spirit is. So you know what, guys? I thought it would be fun. If we find out together, because you might not, well, you you probably know if you're a Nintendo fan. I'm just dumb, so I don't even know, which makes me look like a fake Nintendo fan. But guys, I just I just don't go back to these games. I, I, I when it came out, I didn't really care. So let's see, what is a Smash Bros. Uh, spirit? Let's see, guys. Let's find out together. Spirits are a type of power up and collectible in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. They are featured prominently. In adventure mode, World of Light. Okay, well, that that makes sense. I should have played it, but I just, like, never really got to it. So, they're featured in the adventure mode. They help you. They power you up. And so, the point of this is, Smash Bros. is getting Pokemon Spirits added. So, if I can put one and two together, you will have Pokemon Spirits in the adventure mode. Cool piece of news. Not gonna lie. Am I going to play it? I don't know. I mean, I kind of am. <laughs> I'm in the middle of another game, so maybe eventually I will. But from what I've been told, this is a limited run here. So uh, it's now adding Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Spirits later this week on February 9th. They release. So if you're watching this podcast, they're out now. Boom, bam. Go play Smash Bros. Get your Pokemon Fighter Spirits. But that's, oh, geez, my hat fell. It's all good. I picked it up. We will get to our next news headline. That's, like, the one thing that I should know, but just, like, didn't know. Because, I'm you know, I'm not a big Smash guy. But you know what? That's okay. Because our next news headline is... Oh, snap. This is a fun one. The Legend of Zelda concert that happened today, as of me recording, uh, February 9th. At 12.32 p.m. Didn't happen at 12 p.m. Happened like 6 a.m. But, you know, this happened. Is now available to watch on YouTube. So, guys, if you go to YouTube, maybe you've already seen it. Maybe you haven't. If you go to Nintendo's YouTube channel, you will see a live... Uh, you know, it wasn't live on their channel, but they posted the video, the full video, of a Legend of Zelda concert that happened in Japan today. It happened today. They have the video on their channel. Now... This was meant to be a cool concert, which had an audience. However, there couldn't be an audience because Nintendo was actually receiving threats to an event that they're holding right now called Nintendo Live. They, they've held it in the U.S., Japan, I, I believe Korea, I think, pretty much everywhere. And they were receiving threats to the staff. So they're like, all right, let's do the concert. But we cannot have people in here due to threats. So that sucks. You never want that. But if you do want to watch the concert, it is on their YouTube channel. I will say one thing. I watched not the full thing, but just like, you know, the songs that I wanted to watch. I'm so glad that Skyward Sword. Zelda Skyward Sword was a part of this concert. It made me so happy. 
because for those who don't know, I like bad games uh, for some reason, and Zelda Skyward Sword, a lot of people say it's a bad game, which I, I don't even think, I think I'm just seeing the haters say that, not like the average Zelda fan. The average Zelda fan probably thinks that game is okay, but it's not their favorite. For me, it's my favorite. I don't know why. I love Skyward Sword. So when I saw Ballad of the Goddess was in the concert, I was like, oh, this is a great concert. So, uh, scavenger hunt challenge for all, for all of you guys. Uh, I wrote a comment in the comment section of that video. After this podcast, go try to find it. And if you find it, uh, like my comment and reply to me saying, uh, say Skyward. So then I know that I sent you there. All right. After after the, this this podcast or open a new tab on your computer and go do it. Okay. But that happened to go and watch it while we grab our next news headline. Well, you want you 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 won't have enough time to to uh, watch it while we while we grab the, 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 the what am I saying? You won't have enough time to watch it while I grab the next headline because we have our next headline now. That's not enough time. All right. Our next headline, I stuttered the heck out of that sentence. Oh, guys, Donald Duck is cranking 90s. It's not even a joke. So, Disney is investing $1.5 billion to Epic Games to connect them and Fortnite together. So, as I said, Donald Duck is cranking 90s. Mickey Mouse is about to build a five-star hotel in Fortnite. So, let me get to the news right here. I have some notes on this. Oh, guys. Disney and Fortnite, I don't really feel like it's a collaboration that goes together. But you heard the headline. They're investing $1.5 billion. That's billion with a B. B as in boy. Okay? B as in Baloo. From, what's it, the uh, Jungle Book? He's, he's going to be cranking 90s now. So, Disney has put out a statement on what this all means, and it pretty much explains the entire thing. I will go ahead, and I will read it. I quote, The Walt Disney Company and Epic Games will collaborate on an all-new games and entertainment universe that will further expand the reach of beloved Disney stories and experiences. Disney will also invest $1.5 billion dollars to acquire an equity stake in Epic Games alongside the multi-year project. The transaction is subject to customary closing conditions, including regulatory approvals. In addition to being a world-class games experience and interoperating with Fortnite, Disney Fortnite, the new Persistent Universe will offer a multitude of opportunities for consumers to play, watch, shop, and engage with content, characters, and stories from Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, Avatar, and more. Players, games, and fans, we're listing so many things here, will be able to, to create their own stories and experiences, express their fandom in a distinctly Disney way, and share content with each other in ways that, that they love. This will all be powered by Unreal Engine. We're almost done. Our exciting new relationship with Epic Games will bring together Disney's beloved brands and franchises with the hugely popular Fortnite. So they're combining in a transformational new games and entertainment universe. This marks Disney's biggest entry ever into, in, in, into the world of games. So that means bigger than Disney Infinity and offers significant opportunities for growth and expansion. We can't wait for fans for, for fans to experience the Disney stories and worlds they love in groundbreaking new ways through this movie. Wait. Oh, sorry. 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 Ended off at new ways. I forgot to delete uh, notes from last week. So, we cannot wait for fans to experience the Disney stories and worlds they love in groundbreaking new ways. Sorry, a bit of an error there. So, uh, what does this mean? And is it bad? Do I like it? Am I in favor of it? What are the feelings around this? So, uh, we don't have enough details. Even though that was a pretty long statement. And and there's more that I, I didn't even you know include because it's kind of boring. But do I want 
like just based off what this sounds like, do I want Disney characters in Fortnite? And also, good to mention, this is not Nintendo news, but it's big news that you have been listening to. You know, I've, I've been talking about it and you're still listening, so you must care in some capacity. Uh, do I want Minnie Mouse? Do I want Mickey Mouse cranking 90s? Uh, probably not. But here's the thing. Guys, I have not really played Fortnite. Uh, what's it? Fortnite? Oh, God. Fortnite... What's everyone been, uh, Lego Fortnite, Lego, Lego, I've not played at Lego Fortnite, I was like, trying to think of what that big craze was, it was Lego Fortnite, I've not played that, but I heard it was really awesome, and it felt like a whole new game, so if they can cook something up with Disney characters, I'll put it this way, if Fortnite can revive Disney Infinity, the Toys to Life game, without being Toys to Life, this has great potential, whatever that collaboration is, to be one of my favorite games of all time. Disney Infinity in itself, specifically 2.0. 3.0 is great, but I have big nostalgia with 2.0. Disney Infinity is one of my favorite games of all time. If you can make it look good, be even more, uh, even more creative and have it Disney characters and be somewhat like Disney Infinity. If you can even get close to that with this whole 1.5 billion collaboration, I'd appreciate it. Now, am I going into this expecting a Disney Infinity? No. But if you can make a cool Disney game with Fortnite and stuff, count me in. Whatever this is, I'm excited to to see what comes from it. Okay. Should be good. Should be great. And uh yeah. Disney, Fortnite, count me in. Whatever that is, we will see in due time. But let's grab our next headline here. We have like five left. We have less than it than I thought, but you know what? That's okay. Let's grab this one. This one is long. What does this say? Ooh, guys, my Animal Crossing fans, stand up. Stand up, guys. There's no, no uh, game updates or anything, but we do have Animal Crossing New Horizons, February birthday icons are available on Nintendo Switch Online. So, I say this every single time, but I'll say it again because it is very important context. If you have a Nintendo Switch Online membership and you have clicked the Switch Online app on your Switch Home menu and you go to the Mission and Rewards section of the app, you will see there are tons of special icons to purchase and use for your profile to make yourself look cool in front of your friends. It's simple. Well, now you can go and redeem Animal Crossing New Horizons icons specifically for every villager that has a birthday in February. So that is Rosie, that is Stitches, that is Lily, that is whoever else has a February birthday in the game you can go get an icon of them. In addition to that, not just villagers, guys. You can go on there and get an a icon of a few NPCs that are also in the game. One of them being Pave, the big festival event is this month. Pave has his own icon. I will be getting that. Sable, Label, and Mabel, three rhymes, three, three sisters, go and get those icons. And there's also a Katrina icon on there as well never seen before go and get those icons guys uh, it is 10 platinum points which are free points to collect for an icon and it'll be five platinum points for any backgrounds for the icons or any frames for the icons so go check it out those are all available until march 4th at 8 p.m eastern time which is a very specific time to remove something like this that doesn't matter very much, but it's a time. So before March 4th, guys, set a, set a, guys, if you have an Amazon Echo in your house right now, bring me to her, okay? Alexa, so set a reminder for March 4th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. If she asks you anything else, just say it's for Animal Crossing. And then there you go. Like, that's just, you know, now you know, right? So... 
yeah, it'll probably ring right when they are gone. But just always have that in the back of your head that you have a reminder on Alexa right now, you know? Yeah. Sorry, that was kind of annoying. If you feel like it, guys, delete the reminder, okay? I, I, I'm sorry for bringing that upon you. Guys, let's find our next headline here. Actually, you know what? Let's go to the headline that I said that we would get to, but it's not in this hat because I forgot to print it. All right, let's go to that one, guys. Oh, boy, this is... If you guys watched my last podcast episode, you would know that we went over Nintendo releasing Valentine's Day cards for Mario vs. Donkey Kong. So they were Valentine's cards that you send to your friends online, and it just had, you know, some cheesy sayings like, I can't get enough of you. Like, just some stupid cheesy sayings, right? Guys, we have more. <laughs> we have more Nintendo digital Valentine's Day cards, okay? And this is not fun. This is cheesy. This is cheesy to the moon. So... We have four general, not like game specific, we have four general Nintendo Valentine's Day cards that they have released, they have put out, and they're available to print with the link in the description down below. If you if you go to the description, look for the link that says sources and links. It is a rentry link. Click that. You can then see all the links to everything that I'm mentioning. But Guys, we have four Valentine's Day cards. Let's run through what these are, because they're not cool. The first one is a Kirby one. Yay, right? Kirby's awesome. It's Kirby with a heart over his head, and it says, My heart set on you. <laughs> Shut up. We have one with Toadette, and it says, Sweet on you. <laughs> Shut up. We have one with Waluigi, which is actually the best one, and I actually don't even hate this one. It says, Roses are red. Violets are blue. Wow. Okay, that's that's the only good one. That one's good. That 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 one's great. And then we have a final one with two Yoshis, one green, one red from Yoshi's Crafted World, and it says, "My heart's a flutter." Okay, so guys, if you want to get rejected, you know, download them, copy and paste, link down below. Reject. I'm kidding. Now, am I trying to hate on Nintendo Valentine's Day cards? Not really. Do I think that they're funny? Do I think that they're cheesy? A little, kind of, kind of. So that's why I bring them up to you. But, you know, if you're going to use any, use the Waluigi one. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and quote tweet this tweet. And I, I'm going to say I'm going to have a field field day with this on hashtag the Mario matter. Why, why do I even hashtag this podcast name? No one even tweets about it. <laughs> I just make it up. Uh, I, I'm carrying the Mario matter hashtag on Twitter. Okay. And post. So guys, little do you guys are reading that. So whoever reads that tweet saying, I'm going to have a field day reading these Valentine's day cards, whoever reads that little do they know. I just had my field day. We are recording right now. So follow me on follow me on, on Twitter, uh, at BM Swizzle. Not to, you know, promo too much, but, you know, while we're on the topic, right? So now our next headline. Let's run through. Let's shake the hat. We have, what, one, two, three, four left? Is that five? Four, I think, four. All right, shake it up. Let's grab this one. All right, what is this headline? Do -do -do. Oh, ho, 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 guys. When's the last time you turned on your Nintendo Switch? Maybe it's right now, maybe it was yesterday, maybe it'll be tomorrow. But either way, Nintendo Switch has reached 122 million players annually. Every single year. Fun fact, 122 million people turn on their Nintendo Switch. Do you guys realize there are 130 miles... 39, 39 million Nintendo Switch owners as of now. And that 122 million people is somewhere around, like, like it's it's somewhere near 165th of the population. Do you guys know that on planet Earth? If you put 65 people in a room, at least one of them has turned on a Switch 
in the last year. Do you realize how insane that stat is? If you go to a concert and you see 65 people, one of them has turned on a Nintendo Switch in the last year. Uh, fun fact, but you know, that's a big number. That's bigger than I believe any other gaming console right now. So props to Nintendo. I would love to hear the stats for Xbox and PlayStation, but can't find those right now. Let's grab our next headline here. What is our next Nintendo headline? Boom. Oh, guys, I have already taken advantage of this news headline right here. And you should too, okay? Princess Peach Showtime pre-order bonus has been revealed for Best Buy. So as we know, guys, if you pre-order anything that is game-related... Sometimes the company making the game likes to throw in a pre-order bonus where, of course, as it is in the name, if you pre-order, you get a bonus, a physical reward per se. So we have one revealed for Princess Peach Showtime and the UK already has one, but now Best Buy and America get theirs. All right. So what is the pre-order bonus? Well, you will get an acrylic Princess Peach Showtime stand. It is a stand and you can get a or 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 you will get a Princess Peach uh little figure that like you stick into it and then you 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 get the Princess Peach Showtime logo that you stick into it and it's like this nice little display stand type of thing. So, that is free when pre-ordering from Best Buy. Now, that's the only pre-order bonus in America that we have as of right now, if I have done my due diligence, which I have. Uh, if GameStop, wh who, who normally has one, comes out with one, I will let you know. If, uh, God knows who, if like Target has one or Walmart, I will let you know. But as of right now, that is it. And because that is our only pre-order bonus as of right now, I have went ahead and I have pre-ordered Princess Peach Showtime and the acrylic stand from Best Buy. And I will pick it up on launch day. I will come to the, to this podcast and tell you all about how the game is and what it's like and all the cool stuff like that. And pretty much that's going to be wraps. I will show you the acrylic stand. I will show you it all. However, if GameStop announces like a, like a mug, well... I don't think that I would cancel my my stand for a mug if they announced a Princess Peach Showtime plushie. I might have to cancel this Best Buy order. But apart from that, we should not have to worry about them announcing anything better than an acrylic stand. That seems to be the top dog pre-order. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Who knows? Who knows? Let's grab our next headline. We have two headlines left, guys. Let's see what this is. F-099 has been updated to version 1.2.1, and they changed one thing, guys. Aren't you excited? Probably not. But, you know, let's, let's run through pretty quick, all right? F-099 version 1.2.1. They changed one thing. Okay, they fixed an issue that could occasionally cause players to land off the track when exiting the Skyway on the secret track based on Mute City that occasionally appears in the F-099 mode. So, you know, if you experience that issue, I'm so sorry. But will it be there when you play the game next? Absolutely not. All right, final headline, guys. Let's shake the hat. Let's grab it. Wait, is there two? No, no, no. Just, 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 just one left. Here we go. The headline reads, very similar headline, Mario Maker 2, Super Mario Maker 2, has been updated to version 3.0.3. .3. Another update, guys. Is this one any juicier? Not really. <laughs> it was released on February 6th and, 6th, and what changed was they made adjustments to make for a more pleasant gaming experience. Now, that is bigger than you think. Okay, excuse me. That's a bigger piece of news than it sounds. Okay, and, and, and here's exactly why. Okay, what Nintendo normally says 
when they do things like that is we changed a few things to enhance the gameplay and that's it now what they've they're so much nicer here they normally put out a corporate we adjusted some things this time they said made adjustments to make for a more pleasant gaming experience they've never been that nice when saying this kind of stuff a more pleasant gaming experience they've never said that they're becoming a nice company i'll shut up all right guys that brings us to the end of the nintendo news headlines segment now it is time to dive into our first big topic of the day and that is the nintendo president shantaro furukawa we have an interview with him, not hosted by me, but an interview summary that he did over the past week with the investors and shareholders of Nintendo and all the big business people in the really formal meeting. Okay, that's how I can put it simply. We have to dive into what he talked about. Now, we won't dive into every single question because some are really boring and some he didn't really talk about. But we have the good ones for you. He talked about the Switch, comparing it to previous consoles. He talked about Pal World. Pal World? He gave a comment on Pal World? He talked about a lot of cool things. We have four big highlights from the interview meeting. And we got to freaking discuss. Let's go ahead. Let's get to Nintendo President Shantaru Furukawa interview highlights let's go guys when the nintendo president shantaro furukawa says anything we have to talk about it because if you go to youtube right now go on youtube search shantaro furukawa interview you won't find anything there's one video of him talking at a news conference and a news outlet in japan reported it but you cannot hear his voice in the video. We have no evidence of Shantaro Fur Furukawa being able to speak. So we have to, 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 to read what he said here. So, long story short, the president of Nintendo, Shantaro, has talked about the Switch. He's talked about Pal World, the big Pokemon killer game that caused all the controversy and ruckus. We have him talking about Switch, the Zelda movie. We have a lot of cool things here. So we have four highlights of the interview. If you want to read the entire thing where he was asked like nine to nine to like 10 questions, I'll have it linked down below if you want to read the entire thing. But a lot of it is boring, so I didn't put it in here. It's boring and long, so it just didn't make the cut for the show. But once again, it is down below. That actually rhymed. All right, let's read the first thing. So somebody asked him, someone asked him, what are your thoughts on the difference between Nintendo Switch and past consoles? Now, he does say a few cool things in here. That sounds like, like, a, like a boring question, but his response is fun and long. Let's read it. I quote from Mr. Shantaro Perukawa. The major difference between Nintendo Switch and past platforms is that we have integrated a handheld system and a home console system, which in the past were two separate platforms. That allowed software development resources to be concentrated on Nintendo Switch. We have been able to release a, a continual stream of new titles, and one result is a longer life cycle compared to, plat to past platforms. Looking to the future, the most important thing for Nintendo is that we provide people with distinctively Nintendo entertainment that is fun and surprising in new ways. At the current time, we believe that our integrated hardware, software, de dedicated video game platform business is the optimal way to continue to offer our unique entertainment. And that policy will continue to guide our research and development initiatives going forward. Another difference from past platforms is that we have been working with DNA to spread the use of Nintendo account since before the launch of the Switch. Nintendo accounts are an important touch point for maintaining long-term connections with our consumers. They can be used when consumers migrate to new hardware. Furthermore, 
they are also an important way for us to reconnect with people who have been taking a break from video games and for a while, and then at some point become interested in the unique entertainment that that, uh, that Nintendo has, has to offer. From that perspective, I believe that Nintendo accounts will continue to be important moving forward. So, all this Nintendo account stuff. Now, why is that interesting? A lot of you guys might have been, been listening and be like, Max, you said this wasn't boring. Why is that at all interesting? I think it's interesting because of this. If you guys remember previously, I believe it was the last time that he did an interview like this, uh, he talked about how he wants there to be a smooth transition between Switch 1 and Switch 2. And he said that he wants it to be through Nintendo account. I believe that the entire Nintendo account thing, like with platinum points and like the online rewards and stuff, I think the use of that is only going to go up. He wants everything to be on Nintendo account. And it makes great sense if you heard what like he was saying, how... You know, if like the, the the casual mobile gamer that downloads Mario Kart Tour, they, I believe, have to make a Nintendo account. They will then get emails to their account saying, hey guys, Switch 2 came out. Like, it's a perfect way. And I think that the usage of it will only become bigger and bigger. And that could mean new things on my Nintendo. That could mean a very quick setup process on the Switch 2. That could mean a whole lot of things. So... I'm excited to see further what that means. Now, we have two other small things, uh, and then one thing that we have to dive into. The next thing is he was asked if there were any updates on the Legend of Zelda movie, which was announced in November of 2023, and it was a big ruckus causer, a, 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 a big controversial, not controversial, a big buzz in the Nintendo community. Let's go ahead. What does he have to say on the, on the Zelda movie, and can he give us any inside details? Quote, We announced in November last year that we had started development of a live-action film of The Legend of Zelda. Shigeru Miyamoto, executive fellow and representative, director of Nintendo, and Avi Arad, chairman of Arad Productions, Inc., who has produced many mega-hit films, will be co-producing this film. Currently, we cannot discuss the release date or content of the movie, so please wait for for uh, for, for, for future updates. I thought it said further updates. Uh, yeah, we can't talk about Zelda movie. Honestly, I'd be surprised if we didn't hear about it ever again this year. I think this year we definitely hear something. Do I think... There's a trailer for it, heck no. I don't think that we even see the trailer trailer this year. But I would like something like what the Mario movie had. So once they get their actors for the movie, what they did. So so let's let's go back to I believe 2022, I think. Uh, Nintendo, it might have been earlier than that. Nintendo revealed the actors for the Mario movie in a Nintendo Direct. That's what I want this year. I want in a direct to tell me who is acting in the Legend of Zelda movie. That's that's all I want. That's all I want. That's all I want. I want some update and I want to know the actors. Cause when you're making a movie, you need actors. Oh, I mean, like, what else are you gonna do? You know? Whether it's voice actors or live animation or live action actors, right? You need somebody. Let us know who it is. That's all I want. But he can't even talk about it, so understandable understandable he can't dive deep into that but guys it gets even deeper because somebody asked him what do you think of pal world now if you don't know what pal world is it was a game that came out recently that is essentially a pokemon clone some say better some say worse okay and Nintendo is, or rather, the Pokemon Company is investigating them to see if they used any of Pokemon's assets. If they did, Nintendo can sue, as they do. That rhymes. But 
he was asked about it and what's the status. So he simple business answer from Shantaro Furukawa. All he said on that was, we will take appropriate action against those that infringe our intellectual property rights. Done. That's all he said. So he knows about it. He's certainly aware of Pal World and the, uh, you know, the controversy around that game and Pokemon. He ain't saying much. And let me tell you, that's a, that that that's a great response. That's a scary response. If you're Pal World, you're pooping bricks, okay? Because he's coming for you. I'm kidding. I have no idea. I mean, <laughs> maybe he's maybe he's involved. Maybe he isn't. But. Nintendo versus Pal World is a story to follow. Great business response. Speaking of business, guys. I have to sneeze. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Okay, we're good. Okay. I know how to stop sneezes. That's a great talent of mine. Anyways, we don't have a direct quote for this next piece of news. But we do have a piece of news that has been verified from, Nin from Nintendo. And it's... A big thing to discuss. So, it has been said from Nintendo that their main business for 2024 is going to be the Nintendo Switch. A lot of people read that and think, oh man, Switch 2 is not, it's not you know, coming out until next year. 25, okay? That's what people think when they read this. Now... I'm here to tell you that's probably not the case. Here's why, okay? Last year, we heard that there will be no new hardware the entire year. And that was right. Shantaro Furukawa told us that there will be no new hardware this year. So that, that means no Switch 2, no Switch Pro, whatever it is, Super Switch, whatever. Now, he didn't say that this time. He did not say it. There, there will be no new hardware. If he said that, yeah, we're probably screwed. He didn't say that. He said, well, you know, we have a Switch 2 coming out, but how can I make it sound like what we that you know we 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 don't have one? Uh Nintendo's main business will be the Switch 2. Uh, sorry, sorry, Switch 1. Guys, if the main business was Switch 1 until July. And then the Switch 2 was the focus after that. He can say that the Switch 1 is their main business. Because it was for 7 out of the 12 months. And then the next half is Switch 2 focus. It doesn't have to be like that. But the thing is, you can have a Switch 2 and not have that be your main business. You have tons of games already announced for Switch 1 coming out this year. Paper Mario. You have Luigi's Mansion. You already had another code. You have Mario vs. Donkey Kong. You have Princess Peach Showtime. Can I point one thing out for all for all, all, all of you guys though who don't think Switch 2 is coming out this year? And I'm, and I'm, I'm not trying to argue. I'm not trying to argue at all. I'm not, I'm not trying to argue, but do you see that four out of five of those games are remakes? That's insane! They don't want to make anything new right now. They've put all their time into 3D Mario and God knows whatever else is, is, is coming up on the next console. Animal Crossing, Mario Kart, whatever. Four out of five of your games announced this year are remakes. And they're great remakes. They're awesome. I'm excited for Mario Donkey Kong. I'm excited for Luigi's Mansion 2. I'm excited for Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. But Switch 2 doesn't... It's, it's, it's not going to be their main business because they're going to release it in the later half of the year. If you release it in October, that's not your main business. That's your business 10 months in. So, no, it's, it's not the main business. He's saying that to confuse you, to surprise you, to, to make you still buy Switch games, even though Switch 2 is coming out later this year. Is that factual? No. Is that what this has to be? Yes. If, once again, if they release it in September, October, that's not their main business. Switch was already. <laughs> so, no. If they release one or not, Switch will be their main business either way. So, 
Don't let that little piece of news, that little blurble, think, make you think that there's no Switch 2 news this year. Because there will be. And speaking of Switch 2 news, our next topic, not only has rumors on the next Nintendo Direct, but we'll also dive into, we might have the month, according to credible leakers, that the Switch 2 will be revealed. And it's closer than you think. And you guys know, I'm not a big rumor guy, but I can see a credible rumor when I see one. What am I saying? What what does this even mean? Let's go ahead. Let's get to our next segment. Switch to reveal date question mark. Let's go. Guys, I am the least biggest rumor guy. Okay. You guys, if you've seen the podcast, you know I don't cover lots of rumors, especially the very bad ones. We have two credible men right here, okay? <laughs> In the Nintendo industry. They are insiders and they are right about a lot of things. And they know two things that you also want to know. They have been told that the next Nintendo Direct, they have been told the date for it and what it's going to be like. And they've apparently also confirmed, they have confirmed the Switch 2 reveal month. Okay. Now, who are the leakers who are the insiders we must give credit as always so the two insiders are nate the hate who just quick context i don't know either of them personally okay but what i do know is that uh i'm still like new in this nintendo space and i saw nate the hate tweeting about the uh, direct from last year the june one and he i believe was the first one to throw out an actual date for the direct, it was June tw- June twenty first, and he got that right. So, just off that, I'm trusting him. I did some more research on him, and apparently, he also got Metroid Prime Remastered right and Fire Emblem Engage right. Like he is real good, so I trust. And then the second leaker, who's not reporting these things directly, but like backing up these rumors b- because he's heard the same thing, is Necro Felipe, who runs Universo Nintendo in what I believe is Brazil. So, we got two leakers here, and they're really normally right. Now, here's the thing. I know a lot of you don't like leakers or rumors or all that kind of stuff. I don't normally either, but I can see a credible person when I see one. If these guys are wrong, we will be very careful about, you know, reporting any other future news from them on this podcast. This is their chance. Now, our leakers sometimes wrong, yeah, if they can redeem themselves, great. But the fact they've gotten previous things right, I want to report on these rumors. So, first rumor here, okay? Let's start. February Nintendo Direct. We expected to get one within the past week. The week of what? The 4th? The week of February 5th, actually. We were supposed to get a February Direct, as always. It was scheduled for February 7th or 8th, somewhere, you know, in that range. We didn't get it. We didn't, We did not get it. This week, Nate the Hate said that he is hearing, I believe this actually might have been first reported. This was first reported by Nate or Felipe, and then Nate the Hate backed it up. And the rumor is that the Direct will be next week, I believe sometime, this is not confirmed, but sometime around... February 15th, all from Nate the Hate and Nick or Felipe, and it will not be a main direct. It'll be a partner showcase, which just means you won't see any Nintendo games, only third-party games. So, here's a few thoughts. One, that that, that kind of sucks, right? Like, that kind of sucks a little bit, like, that's sad. Or is it? Or is it? Because... The less first-party games they show, like, like like made by Nintendo games, the sooner we can get to Nintendo's Switch 2 stuff in one of these upcoming months, which I'll get into in, like, a minute, the faster we get rid of first-party Switch games, we can then get to Switch 2 stuff. So, is that a bad thing? No. Will I be live-streaming it? I don't even know. 
probably, but I'm not, I'm not excited for that anymore. But look out, February 15th, that is a Thursday. That is the rumored date reported by Necro Felipe, backed up by Nate the Hate. He said that is what he is hearing as well. So, that's our first rumor. Kind of sucks that it's not a full direct, but as I said, get excited. Because they also claim to know that the Nintendo Switch 2, and I'm about to drop a dagger. I did not report this, this, this you know information, but they say the Switch 2 will be revealed in March. All right, just let it sink in. Let me say it. Let, let, let me say that one, one more time. One, one more time. One, one more time. Let me say that. The Nintendo Switch 2 will be revealed in March. According to people who have gotten things right before. Nate the Hate and Necro Felipe. Okay. So, let's dive into this. Now, this was first reported by Nate the Hate on the, I believe it was the Game and Talk podcast. They're all great. RGT, Josie, Nate, great podcast. Um, this was reported on that podcast by Nate. Uh, if I have to, you know, remind you, Nate the Hate, to my knowledge, from what I've seen, I'm sure that he has a, a phenomenal track record. I've heard people say that. But from what I've seen, uh, he correctly predicted the June direct date from last year. And after that, I'm like, all right, he's credible. Because that's a very specific date that he put out and put his track record on. He, he, he put his track record on the line. And that's already big for me. So he is saying the Switch 2 will be revealed in March. Okay. Necro Felipe then wrote an article backing up this statement. He can say that he's also, he talked to sources and he has confirmed this. That's what he's hearing as well. And here is part of his article that he wrote as it shows some good information. This is an article on Universo Nintendo from Necro Felipe. Quote, since last year, Nate Drake, or, or Nate the Hate, a better known insider with good accuracy regarding information about Nintendo's plans, had commented on March 2024 being a month of news regarding Nintendo's next hardware. In the most recent episode of his podcast with his predictions for Nintendo in 2024 and later in his appearance on the Game & Talk podcast, yes, sorry, I, I should say Nate has his own podcast and he talked about it on there as well. So my, my bad, that was my mistake. Nate, Nate, Nate stated that he expects the successor to the Switch to be revealed at some point during the month of March in order to solidify this statement. I contacted our sources who, who corroborated the report made by Nate the Hate about March, adding that multiple development companies slash publishing partners of Nintendo are preparing to announce their projects and that several retail stores are moving to prepare the start of pre-sales of that system. Now, that's where the rumors come from. Two credible insiders... And I want to dive into why March makes a lot of sense. Now, this is a stupid reason, but it makes a lot of sense, okay? Bear with me, but the Nintendo Switch, if you'll remember, released in March, okay? We're coming up on the seventh year of the Switch. I mean, we are in it, but like, in... Well, sorry, we're, we're, we're not in it yet. But on March 3rd, 2024, the Switch will be seven years old. The Switch released in March. If we get a March reveal... Okay, guys, like guys, remember, the Switch 1 was revealed in October. Can we get a March reveal in an October release date? I'm not trying to say that's going to happen. But the timing makes sense. Because all we've heard for the past six months is Switch 2 planned to launch in fall. Nintendo if you look at it historically, has taken one, two, three, four, October to March, that's that's five actually, <laughs> five months to prepare, launch, and promote their next console. If there's a reveal in March, April, May, June, July, August, anywhere, wait, is, is, is my math mathing? 
No, it's not. You know, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. All right. Five months. We're in August. August of 2024. August, September, October, somewhere in that range. We should have the Nintendo Switch 2. You want a fall release in a March reveal? Makes a lot of sense if you look at the timeline. I don't doubt March for a reveal. Now, I assume... Here's the here's the, the real sauce right here, guys. If Nintendo reveals the Switch 2 in March, I think, personally, they're going to do it in the first two or three weeks. And this is not me, like, digging into data, guys. This is common sense. Nintendo releases Princess Peach Showtime on March 22nd. Are you really going to do it after that game releases? Maybe you will. Maybe it'll be like March 20, what, 28th? I don't know. But I think you do it while the month is clear. While it may hurt Princess Peach Showtime sales by a tiny bit, it it, 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 it really shouldn't, but it could possibly. I think that you do it during the beginning of March, while it's all empty. Because you have Mario vs. Donkey Kong releasing on February 16th. You have Side Order, I believe, the week after that. And then you're in a drought for like a month until Princess Peach Showtime releases. So, I think that you do it in between that drought. That's when you, you know, reveal Switch 2. That's when it'll be. That's that's what I think. But, guys, these are all rumors. Take them all with a grain of salt. It's not confirmed. If it's not out of Nintendo's mouth, it's not confirmed. But these guys are credible, and I've seen it with my own eyes. Now, if they're not credible... To maintain the integrity of the Mario Matter, your favorite Nintendo podcast, we will not report on these guys for the foreseeable future. But as of now, I've seen them be credible, and I want to also say they are not like 1 billion percent definitively saying, yes guys, 1 billion percent March. They're saying that's what they've been told by multiple sources. So don't send hate to them either if they're wrong. There's probably a reason. That's not me saying this is going to be wrong. I think it'll be definitely right. And they're putting their track records on the line. That's what they, they've been told. But, you know, it's a it's a complex situation for complex listeners. And it's a complex topic. So why not we move to something later? Guys, you all have asked me questions on this podcast to answer. And I will be doing it right now on the show. Let's answer your questions in the Answering Your Questions segment. Let's go. Alrighty, guys. You all have asked me questions to answer on your favorite Nintendo podcast, guys, the Mario Matter. Now, I will be answering your questions through voicemails that that you've left me or through written questions on my YouTube. Now, how do you ask a question to be answered on the Mario Matter podcast? Well, there are two ways. One. You ask me questions through voicemail. So if you go to, is is the link easy? So I believe it is speakpipe.com slash the Mario Matter. You can leave voicemails there. If that doesn't work, I'll leave the link in the description. You go to the site, hit record, talk to me, say, hey, hi, I'm Mario from Brooklyn, New York, and I have this question for you. You can talk to me there. Feel free to ramble, and I will listen to it, play it on the podcast, and answer it for everyone to hear. I think it's such a cool little way to ask questions. Or if you don't want to ask me a voice question, I am still taking written questions. Now, I used to take questions from my YouTube and my Discord. I'm taking less from my Discord because... I don't know. I feel like YouTube is more straightforward. You don't you don't have to like, you know, create a whole account on Discord and join the server and then find the channel. YouTube is very very straightforward. So, every single Wednesday, I actually missed this Wednesday because uh, I was like stressed out, I was trying to trying to do stuff. So, I posted it on Thursday, but but normally every single Wednesday on my YouTube channel uh, community tab, you can find me saying, "Hey guys, uh, the Mario Matter is taking questions." Feel free to comment them down below, and we'll answer them. Now, 
you guys did that and i have some questions from there if you want to know how to get there uh go to my youtube channel look for the uh com look for the community tab and then every wednesday wednesday at, at like 12 p.m eastern time check back and you'll see that post but if you want to guarantee that your question gets asked, guys, there is one way to do so. Become a channel member today. Being a channel member gets you exclusive perks like, one, a guaranteed question, two, bonus episodes of this show, behind-the-scenes episodes. You get a potential, I mean, you, 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 you have to, like... Uh, become a certain tier member, but you will get a follow on social media, a physical newsletter sent to your house. Guys, it's a lot of cool perks. Check it out. Link down below to become a channel member. So we have some member questions. And if you do leave a question uh, on a voicemail as a member, please make sure to, to put member in your name as you write it on the voicemail. But here we go. We have five voicemails, two from channel members, and then we have three from non-members, and, and then three written questions, guys. Let's go ahead. Let's get to it. We have our first one from Cobleb, who is a channel member. Let's go ahead. Let's hear it. Hello, my name is Cobleb. I'm a channel member. Uh, if you're listening to this and you're not a channel member, you should become a channel member because it is awesome value. Heck yeah. And I want you to listen to this made by someone in the Discord server named Bobby Boy. Even though he's not in the Discord server anymore, he did make this, and I think it is awesome. All right? Oh boy. Oh, I'm gonna get copyrighted though. Oh, I can't play this. Oh no. Okay guys, so Cobleb is playing um a so I did a Mario Matter rap. I believe uh Alpaca, Pumped Alpaca sent me this fan mail of a rap that he made for the Mario Matter. I can't play it though, because what Cobleb is playing on the uh, voicemail is cop it's it's the gangsters paradise instrumental i can't play it on the podcast can i skip to where he stopped playing it let's see okay, i have like two more seconds become a channel member join the discord server bye okay so that's all i can play I'm, I'm sorry that was kind of a failed operation i love the song though i love how uh geez somebody put the gangsta's paradise instrumental behind it i love it because i had asked somebody to uh, do that i was pretty off beat but if you want to hear it, uh, I'm going to pin it in our Discord server. If you want to hear that entire thing that I could not play on the on the uh, podcast, join the Discord and uh, find it on there. I will have it pinned. There we go. So that's our first voicemail. Uh, sorry, I cannot play that on the podcast. But with that said, let's get to our next channel member question from Corey. Let's hear it, Corey. Hey there, Ian Swizzle. My name is Corey, coming to you live from Taylor, South Carolina. Let's go. I'm just wondering, what is your favorite Mario video game of all time? Mm, you know, thank you, Corey, for the question. I didn't have an answer for this for a long time until I really, like, sat back, played some Mario games, and I was like, man, I think that's my favorite one. And my favorite Mario game of all time. Is Super Mario 3D World. Something about it, guys. Something about it. Something about it. I got it for Christmas 2014? A year late, I think, on the Wii U. Or two years late. I think it was two years late. On the Wii U. And I played that all Christmas Day. It was like one of the best days ever. And not just because of that little nostalgia factor there. The game is just phenomenal. The game is great. It was... Seen as not a big enough game for the Wii U to like push the Wii U, I, I've seen. But is the game fun? Yeah, because if it wasn't, it wouldn't get ported to Switch. Uh, you can argue that Mario Wonder is better than it, but I mean, honestly, I enjoy the 3D world <laughs> as small as it is. I like the music better. I like the uh, gra the 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 art style. Sorry, better. Uh, just you know, small things uh, that have to do with that game. I like a lot. The gamepad use on the Wii U, phenomenal game. Play Super Mario 3D World. Play it. If you haven't already, play it. That is my favorite Mario game. Thank you, Corey, for becoming a channel member. Now our next question from the non-members, which is totally okay. You never have to be a member, but we do answer member questions first, and we guarantee them. But I totally understand. Uh, we have two member questions written later on in the show. 
All right. Now, Ganon left us a voicemail. Let's hear it. Hey, M. Swizzle or Max. I, I don't know what I should call you. All good. But I've been watching for a little bit. I turned 13 in November. I'm turning 14 this year. Let's go. And uh, I just really like your content. I like listening to the Mario Matter. If I'm just like laying in bed trying to sleep or I'm just like hanging around around my house and I'm just like bored. Thank or you. Or if I'm like speed running Mario 64, <laughs> you know, practicing. And uh, well, I recently just got a Nintendo 64 for Christmas. Mm. And so I want to know if you have any recommendations for that. I, I know you're not really into older games like that. As you said in the Nathaniel Bandy episode, I believe. He brought but, the facts. Uh, I just wanted to know if you have any recommendations like Banjo-Kazooie, Majora's Mask, just something like that. And if this isn't too much, I'd also like 3DS recommendations because I just oh, bought yeah. one with my own money mm-hmm. that I've been saving up for a few years now, actually. Congrats. That's and awesome. I recently got new Super Mario Bros. because I would play that uh, when I was a little kid and Sonic Generations. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one final question is, what's your favorite GameCube game? Because oh. I'm a big fan of the GameCube. I've been playing Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, mm-hmm. and I've just been having a really fun time. And I want to know if you have any re- re- uh, recommendations for that. Uh, bye. Awesome. Yeah, so we have three questions. Thank you so much for your voicemail submission. I appreciate it. And congrats on buying the 3DS. That's awesome. And also, thank you for these uh, for the uh, support. So uh, let's start. N64 game recommendations. It's actually funny that you referenced the uh, Nathaniel Bandy episode because the game that, that, that we talked about on, on there was a game that I would recommend you because I like the game. He was talking about his N64 collection and uh, the game that he said that, that, that he paid a lot of money for is like one of my favorite N64 games. Sculpt, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, uh, Clay Fighters Sculptor, Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut. That, that's, that's the name. That's the name. I have forgotten it. Uh, that game is, it's, it's a real fun fighting game. I like that one. Uh, but yeah, you kind of nailed it. I'm not a big retro gamer. Uh, retro in the sense of like anything that was N64 and earlier. I, my, my earliest like retro, quote unquote retro that I like is like GameCube games, uh, which you asked me about. I will get to that. Uh, but my N64 recommendations, I have not played a whole lot. However, uh, you got to play, yeah, Mario 64, Ocarina of Time. I have not personally pe- beat those games, but those are obviously like some of like the greatest games for the N64. One game that I haven't played, but I've seen my brother play, which I, I think looks like a lot of fun, is uh, Pokemon Snap. I think that's what it was. That game looks fun. I've never played it like firsthand, but that game looks awesome. I would give you those three games. And then favorite, was it favorite Mario? Wait, hold on, wait. What was the second question? Hold on. It was, um, oh, oh, sorry. 3DS, 3DS, 3DS. 3DS recommendations. I I would give you, well, of course, my favorite game of all time is uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf. I give you that. I give you uh, Tomodachi Life. Tomodachi Life is a phenomenal one. And I give you... I'll give you one more. I give you... It's a cheaper game. It's not as great of a game. I mean, listen. It's an awesome game. But it's not as content-filled. Get Pilot Wings Resort. That game is awesome. A fun little 3DS title. And then my favorite GameCube game is, of course... I mean... (laughs) Animal Crossing, of course, of of course, the Animal Crossing fan likes Animal Crossing for the GameCube. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Animal Crossing GameCube is my favorite GameCube game. Uh, a close second would be, as stupid as it sounds, probably Shrek 2, because that is the first video game I've ever played in my entire life ever, Shrek 2. So Shrek 2 is, an, is a top two favorite GameCube game for sure. All right, now our next voicemail, thank you so much, Ganon, uh, comes from, if I'm saying this right, Costas. Costas, what do you got? Hi, Max. Here is your biggest fan from Switzerland. Let's go! I'm still learning English, but I wanted to ask you if you've ever tried the games from the Ori series, like Ori and the Will of the Wisps. If you never tried them, you have to. These are very good games. Keep it up with the good work. Bye. Thank you. So the Ori series, I've heard of it, but I've never actually played it. Uh, honestly, 
I haven't even heard of it too much. Can I can I Google this? Ori Wheel of the Wisps, as you mentioned. Let's see. And 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 the Will of the Wisps. Sorry, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Here we go. Uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a platform adventure Metroidvania video, uh, video game developed by Moon Studios and published by Xbox Game Studios. It's on Switch. I've I've heard of the series, but I'm not familiar with this game. You know what? Because of you, I might check this out. It's on Steam, so I can play it on Steam Deck for how much? For $9? You can't even lose. You know what? I'm going to try this eventually, and I will let you know how it is. Thank you so much for the recommendation, and uh, unfortunately, I have not played it, though. All right, now our final voicemail comes from Harry. Let's hear it, Harry. Hey, Max. It's, uh... Great if this message finds it on the show, but, uh, yeah, I love your podcasts. I've been listening to them for quite a while now. I, I'm not, I haven't been watching since episode one, but I've definitely been, um, watching it for quite a while. Sure. I'm a really huge Nintendo fan, uh, especially, uh, you know, Mario, and I, I'm actually the only person I know who's really really into animal crossing uh i've been playing animal crossing since it, new horizons since it came out and i i love it it's one of my favorite games ever um and i have a question um so what what is your favorite mario game because i mm. I've, i'm just curious because you know you know from a a from a nintendo creator uh, it's just it would be cool to know so, uh, yeah, I hope this message finds it on the show. I love your videos, man. Uh, I've, I've subscribed to both channels. So, you know, uh, love your stuff, man. Hope to see you on the show. See ya. Heck yeah, thank you. So, favorite Mario game. By the way, I love your message. And I love any accent. I love that one. <laughs> so, favorite Mario game. We did answer this, but no worries. No worries at all. I am going to put a spin. Whenever we get, like, some duplicate questions, I always love to put a spin. And by the way, thank you for the uh, support. I like to, to put a spin. I mean, quite literally. We said that my favorite Mario game is Mario 3D World. But you know what? I'm going to give you my favorite Mario spin-off game. Like, quite literally putting a spin on the question. <laughs> so, my favorite Mario spin-off game I'll give you that, is Mario Sports Mix. That's, can you call it a spinoff? It's a Mario Sports game, which is, I think, an awesome series that should keep on pumping out games. Like, I need a, a brand new Mario Tennis game on Switch 2 as soon as possible. Mario Golf 2. Anything Mario Sports, I love. But Mario Sports Mix for the Wii had basketball, had hockey. I mean, that game, you can sit down with with your three other friends and bean bags and have the the uh, Wii remote and just play for hours. Time flies when you're playing Mario Sports Mix. That is my favorite Mario spin-off or sports game. And yeah, apart from that, my actual favorite is uh Mario Mario uh 3D World. But I like how you said it. you're the only person that you know that likes Animal Crossing. I'm 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 similar to that. I don't have the immediate person that I can call up and then be like, yo, hop on Animal Crossing. I do know people that play Animal Crossing, like, you know, that I'm friends with. But I definitely feel that. Because, because like, when I was, like, 2015, 14, I was playing Animal Crossing New Leaf, and I had no one to play with. I played with my brother for like a year and then like he kind of phased out of it. And then I was like, you know, I was a lone trooper playing some Animal Crossing New Leaf. Now it's my, now it's my, you know, favorite game of all time. But I definitely feel that. I hope that you are still enjoying Animal Crossing. I have kind of fallen out of love with New Horizons recently, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get back into it. I'll get back into it when the next game is announced. So you have my word, but enjoy Animal Crossing, and thank you for the support and the voicemail. Now we have written questions, guys. Three written questions to run through. The first two are from channel members. From Zach Curdy is our first question here. So, Zach Curdy says, 
if I can zoom into my to my uh, document here. Hey, Max, love your content. Number one, how do you think Nintendo will, will market the next console? Like, what will the ads and promotions be trying to suggest? Like how the Wii was about playing together. Would it be better if they market it differently and try a new route to appeal to all types of gamers? Yeah, that's a hard one because you got to look at the uh, 3DS marketing because the last time that we saw an iteration of a console was, uh, well, I mean, it was the Wii to the to, to the Wii U, right? That's like a, it's, it's still under the Wii name, but it's like a brand new thing, right? Wii to the Wii U, DS to 3DS. How do they market those consoles? Well, the reality is they didn't do it very well. They didn't do it very well. 3DS was better than the Wii U marketing, but when you make a new quote unquote iteration of a console, like if it's called the uh, Super Switch, how do you promote the Super Switch? Everyone knows what a Switch is. The the, uh, the uh, Joy-Cons come off, you can take it wherever you want. Everyone knows how, like how that works. I think if you're a Nintendo, you take a stab at marketing like how you did with the Wii U, but not at the same time. Like, So we all know that the Wii U commercials sucked. They were really bad, no one liked them, and they were geared towards little kids, which isn't always what you want, right? I think what they had, though, kind of going was great. In those commercials, they showed off pretty much everything that, that the Wii U could do that the Wii could not do. I think that you have to continue that with the Switch Switch, Switch 2 marketing. Show off why you want to buy the Switch 2 as opposed to your normal Switch. Show off what it can do that the Switch cannot. Show off that it can still play Switch games. Show off... All the new things that, that you add to that console. Otherwise, just keep on, you know, promoting it. It would also help to make it look pretty visually different. If somebody sees a commercial of a Switch and then a Switch 2, if you can't tell a big difference between Switch and Switch 2, just visually, you got a problem. It shouldn't be very different, but different either way. So, and then your second question, what titles may launch with the next console? Will we get Mario Kart 9 on launch? Yeah, um, I think that they'll they'll definitely have a 3D Mario. They always have a 3D Mario game near launch, not always on launch, but you know, near launch. They had Mario Odyssey in October of 2017, just seven months after the Switch released. They had a uh, Mario 3D World, great example. I believe that was shortly after launch as well. So, I think that this time will will be a change. They will actually launch the system with a with the uh, 3D Mario game. I don't even think it'll be Odyssey 2. I think it'll be whatever the next 3D Mario whatever is. I think that's just going to be what it is. Uh, Mario Kart 9, I think, will come shortly after. Because your biggest game ever is Mario Kart, right? You, you you know launch a new console. You want Mario Kart as soon as possible. They kind of failed. They, 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 they failed that with the Wii U. The Wii U Mario Kart came out like three years later. 2015 or something, you know? They kind of failed that, and that was their best-selling game. Mario Kart, by now, you know, is your biggest game ever. You want that on the console as soon as possible. So, if you if you put out a 3D Mario game at, at launch, you, you should put out Mario Kart 9 in the next two months after that. It's hard to have two big Mario games back-to-back, -back, but you need a strong launch, and, I, and, and I, I, I think that you launch both those games near each other. I think that you do that. Thank you, Zach, for your questions. And then, and then, and then we move to Doggo. Doggo7721 asks, Do you think we will get a port of Kirby's Epic Yarn for the Switch 2? Or whatever it's called. Uh, hmm. Probably not. Just being honest. Uh, Unless they did, like, some virtual console with, like, the Wii. Like, if you can buy Wii games to play on Switch, maybe. But I don't think that they'll make a full-on port of it. Just because they already kind of did that on the 3DS. They made a 3DS port or, you know, remake of the game. And I don't know that it would get ported, you know, twice. I don't see it getting ported twice. They've already put it on, like, one of their more recent consoles. Would I like it? I would love for it to happen. But... I don't know if it'll happen or not. I, I, I'm not really sure. And then finally, Joseph asks, 
Is Animal Crossing Wild World your favorite DS game? I know that the Animal Crossing game is usually your favorite game on the console, but I also know that you don't really care for Wild World. If it is not your favorite, what is? So, you, you nailed it. Wild World is my least favorite Animal Crossing game. And the reason for that is just because it's not even Nintendo's fault. They did what they could. But you cannot make a good Animal Crossing game on DS. Simply because it does not have enough power to run a good Animal Crossing game. It was not good. It was really bad. I didn't like how the villagers sound like a screeching piano. I didn't like how there were no holidays. I didn't like how it just felt crusty, which it would have to. It's, 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 it's on DS hardware. But point is, no matter how you cut the cookie, the game sucked. If you liked the game, I've talked to Wild World super fans. It's normally because of one of two reasons. One, it's your first Animal Crossing game ever, so so you so you like it because of that. Or two, pure nostalgia. Yeah, me and my friends took it on a camping trip, and it was just so much fun. And, and I, I I just love Wild World. Shut up. I'm just kidding. Sorry, sorry. That's offensive. But. You probably just have some connection to it, and I totally understand that. My favorite game, favorite game of all time is Animal Crossing New Leaf. Why? Not only because it was my first, I, I have great nostalgia with it. So I understand. I'm just saying that's why people love Wild World, right? Um, and, and, and that rule goes with many different games. But um, I would say it's probably still my favorite DS game. Yeah. I think I'd say that. Now, here's the only catch. I just got done playing another code recollection. And if you haven't heard my thoughts on that game yet, members have. I, I, I don't know that the public has. I tweeted it, but not everyone reads my tweets. Another code recollection, that game that came out that came out for Switch less than a month ago, is one of my top 10 favorite games of all time. Of all time. After playing that, I was like, wow, yep, that makes the whole top 10 list. It was one of the greatest games I've ever played. Not everyone will have the same opinion, but I love that game. However, why is that relevant? The original game to another code recollection is called Trace Memory. That's a DS game. I know how the story goes, and it was a great story. If I play that on DS, that has potential to overtake Animal Crossing Wild World as my favorite DS game. I have to buy that game and play it first. But that, if, if any DS game can take over Wild World as my favorite DS game, it's Trace Memory. I have to buy it first and find out. But with that said, that is it. For the Mario Matter episode number 75, guys. We are three quarters of the way to episode 100. That's actually awesome. We are now in the fourth quarter, the final countdown. We will have episode 100 later this year. Uh, I think it's like August or I, I, I think it's for August. Yeah. So look forward to that eventually going to happen sometime this year. And with that said, I appreciate you all so much for watching guys one thing real quick actually two things that i want to talk about i love talking about like like talking about like cool stuff at the end of the podcast is so much fun one cool thing you can't see it and you haven't seen it the entire time but if you watch the uh, video version i have like this new m swizzle sticker on the back of my microphone it's so awesome i love it look at that very very cool branding right there but Otherwise, guys, I recently just got a new audio mixer called the Go XLR. You might have heard of it. You might have not. If you're a creator, you might have seen it before. Um, I can actually do some special effects with this Go XLR audio interface mixer sort of thing. And listen, guys, I will begin. And I hope this does not hurt your ears. Turn down the volume just in case. I can now use a megaphone for the outro. Ready, guys? Does it work? Guys, if you have not already, make sure to follow on Spotify and subscribe on YouTube for the latest and greatest Mario Matter episodes. Uh, also, leave us a great rating on Spotify and Apple. That is very much appreciated. And with that said, let me turn this off. Sorry if that was loud or if that was annoying or what you know whatever it was. I will see you all on the next episode of the Mario Matter next Saturday. 
which will be February 17th, and we will dive into my first impressions on Mario vs. Donkey Kong and anything else that comes out within the next week. I'll see you all soon, and maybe in between now and then in the next episode, we, we will have a Nintendo Direct. And if we have a Direct next week, like I said, those that's from the same guys who said Switch 2 in March. So we got to see interesting stuff going to heat up this week. I'll see you all soon. Adios. Adios.